My name is Attorney Gordon Johnson, and welcome to CarbonMonoxidePoisoning.com. This website is here because our firm, the Brain Injury Law Group, represents those who are injured or killed as a result of carbon monoxide exposure, um, carbon monoxide poisoning. In order to help you understand that, I brought some models with me and some and a, and a simple cigarette lighter to demonstrate some of the principles of carbon monoxide. The first thing you have to understand when understanding carbon monoxide is that carbon monoxide is produced by a simple combustion reaction like a flame. When I get the cigarette lighter to light, um, what you see is a flame. What's occurring in that flame is that carbon, the basic biological matter of created in the universe from plants, is being burned, um, being oxidized. The carbon is being combined with an oxygen atom and making um, a byproduct called carbon dioxide. I brought, made these two models, which are models of what um, carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide molecules look like. When we had our flame, what was happening is that carbon, which I've represented by the green, for the green plants, and two oxygen atoms are combining. Um, that creates the molecule called carbon dioxide. Anytime there's a flame, anytime there's an oxidation, whether it be rust, whether it be wood burning, whether it would be the gasoline burning in your engine, the goal is to create energy and the molecule of carbon dioxide. Um, that is the basic equation of life on Earth is the combination of that biological matter, the carbon, we, sometimes the science fiction calls us the, the carbon-based beings, the human beings are carbon-based beings, combining that carbon with the oxygen to create carbon dioxide and energy. Now, if there's not enough oxygen when that oxidation, that flame, when that um, burning is occurring, what happens instead of carbon dioxide, the two oxygens, is you get carbon monoxide. Um, a carbon monoxide molecule has one carbon and one oxygen. And that happens because there's incomplete supply of oxygen when the oxidation, when the burning is occurring. Now that can happen, for example, in an automobile exhaust. You get a lot more carbon monoxide in automobile exhaust than in most flames because there's a internal combustion engine creates sort of an explosion instead of a continuous burning like with the cigarette lighter. What you have in carbon monoxide creating um, situations like an automobile is a incomplete, not quite enough oxygen so that you don't get the full molecule. Now the reason that's a problem is that the air that we breathe um, contains oxygen, which is actually an O2 molecule. So instead of one white and one green, it'd be two whites. Um, you get, you breathe that air, it creates the respiration, and allows the oxidation to actually occur on the cellular level. Each cell of our body has a little flame that goes off that creates an oxidation between carbon and oxygen, and should be producing the carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide that we normally see. When, however, there is carbon monoxide being inhaled in addition to oxygen, the carbon monoxide bonds to our blood and creating something called carboxyhemoglobin. And instead of the oxygen being flown through the blood to our cells, what happens is carbon monoxide takes its place. And because carbon monoxide bonds to hemoglobin far more so than oxygen. When you get carbon monoxide in the blood system, it becomes toxic. It replaces the oxygen and ultimately the cell gets asphyxiated. And if it's catastrophic enough, either um, loss of consciousness will occur and ultimately death. Often the death occurs because the heart doesn't have enough oxygen to continue beating. 